Welcome to a new video about Chappy Chow Response LC ladder filters. In this example number two, we will discuss the high pass filter design using the LC ladder configuration. Of course, we'll work out the calculations step by step and also verify these in SPICE simulations. So let's look at our objective. The design is a Chappy Chow Response filter. It must be an LC ladder high pass filter. And we need to use 50 ohm double terminated shunt input circuit. The generalized circuit is shown here, the filter, and also the RS and RL, the source resistor and the load resistor in the normalized values of 1 ohm each. The specifications are shown here. We need to have a maximum pass band ripple of 0.5 dB. The minimum stop band attenuation must be 28 dB. The pass band frequency is 500 kHz and the stop band frequency is 300 kHz. So let's see how we can work it out. The solutions, we start with the filter order, step one, calculation of the filter order and we need to find the coefficients, the epsilon p related to the a, a max. We have this also done in the previous videos. So we look at 0.5 dB and you substitute the values you get now 0.3493. In a similar form for epsilon s for the a minimum, so it's related to that. And we substitute now 28 here and you get now 25.099. Now taking this together, we need to find the filter order n. n is an equal to uh, uh, calculate using this formula. You see again r cosine hyperbolical and then epsilon s over epsilon uh, p. And also in the similar form in the denominator for the fp and the fs for the pass band and the stop band frequencies. Now when you now substitute the values we have determined from the epsilon and also what we have given, we can calculate that this is 4.5218, but we need to use integer order. So fourth order will be two less, and it must be then fifth order. So we need to go for N is five. The next step, step two, is the calculation of the frequency scaling factor. Kf. That's actually just setting this Kf to omega p, which is 2 pi times this fp. So it's not just a calculation, actually, it's just setting this Kf to that value, which is 2 pi times this 500 kilohertz. So this then 10 to the power 6 pi radius per second, of course, is 500 kilohertz. So this is just the value we will use later. Step 3 is calculate the scaled component values. We use the 0.5 dB ripple for this Chappie Chair response, and this is now the normalized element values for the LC ladder low pass filter. Of course, we need to design a high pass filter, so we will need to make the transformation and that will be done later. But we know that we need the fifth order, so N is 5, so that means this is the row we need to use. So we have now five element values here, they are normalized. Okay, now. This is the normalized uh, values and this is the fifth order LC ladder filter prototype for low pass filter, not for a high pass filter. So the C1, L2, C3, L4 and C5, the values are shown here in a normalized form. So the C1 has a value of 1.7058 farads, L2 is 1.2296 henrys, etc. for C3. In th this much farad, L4, this much Henry's, and C5 is the value shown here in farads. But they are normalized. So we need to go to the scaled value later. So we need to transform this to a high pass configuration. You see actually here the following the C1s are transformed in an inductor, which is shown here as an LP1, which is a parallel. And the uh, L2R connected in this form, which is then transformed in a series capacitor. So everything which is a capacitor will be transformed in an inductor, and everything which, which is an inductor will be transformed in a capacitor. That's actually what it is. And we also scale up the RS, the source and the load resistor, and we give it by a prime. So that will be also go up. That will be multiplied by 50, so that will be also our magnitude scaling factor Km. That is 50, because it requires a 50 ohm double terminated short input circuit. The values, uh, the formulas for LP1, LP2, LP3 and also the others are now uh, described. So we have now LP1 is equal to Km over Kf times uh, divided by C1. C1 is again from the table and Km is 50 and this is we just set in the step 2 and now you calculate it, you get now 9.33 microhenry. 
the CS1, which is here, related to L2 value, here, which is 1.2296. Again, the KM and the KF, we use it, and you get now 5.177 nanofarads. LP2 is now related to C3, which is then this coefficient, 2.5408. You go here, you substitute all the values, and you get now 6.264 microhenries. The CS2, which is then calculated like this, but then using the L4 normalized value, so similar to actually CS1. Again, the KM and the KF, and also the L4, but they're the exact same, so you get also the same capacitor value, which is then 5.177 nanofarads. The final one is the LP3, which is similar to, again, the LP1 and the LP2, but again, now the coefficient is this one, but that is exact same as the C1 coefficient, so you will get the same value there, 9.33 microfarads. The only thing left is the RS and the RL prime, so they're actually now the scale of values, KM times RS, that will be then RS prime, it will be 50 ohms, the other one is also 50 ohms. So we have now all the values we need. So let's collect them together here, you see all the values, LP1, CS1, LP2, CS2, LP3 and also the RS and RL primes. And this is now the design circuit. You see again here the prototype, low pass filter, fifth order. And this is now the designed fifth order high pass filter for the Chebyshev -Chebby response. And you see also the values LP1, LP3 are exact same, LP2 is all shown here. And CS1 and CS2 are exact same. Okay, let's move on now looking at the simulation results. This is now the body plot for the magnitude only. You see also the circuit here, and we see some label still, so let's go one by one. The pass band gain here is here at high frequency, so high frequency gain is 0 0.5. Why? Because at high frequencies, looking at this circuit, the inductor is an open, so this is just an open, and the capacitors are perfectly short, so they're actually effective. You get only RS and RL, so that's just 50 ohm over 50 plus 50, so that means 1 over 2, and 20 log of 0 0.5 is minus 6.02 dB approximately. So that's correct, that's actually shown here. The passband frequency is 500 kilohertz, well should be as required, and that's actually shown here. You can see that. Why? Because this is minus 6.02 dB, and this label is at minus 6.52 dB. So it's actually 0 0.5 down. You see also the ripples, by the way, because this valley and this peak and this valley again, this peak and this point of the passband frequency. So how much, how many points do we have here? We have now the valley one, a peak two, a valley again one. That's actually three. So we get have a peak there four, and this fifth point. So in total, we have actually fifth five points. That means actually a fifth order Chebyshev response field. So you can actually also pinpoint the order of the Chebyshev by looking at the valleys, number of valleys and number of peaks and also the final point. That's, that will give you the order of your Chebyshev response filter. The next one is a passband ripple that's at 0.5 dB as required. Now stop paint attenuation is minimum, what we required was 28, but what we have looking at this one is, because at this point what we have a 300 kilohertz, the gain is there minus 38.58 dB. But we started that at minus 6.02 dB. That means we go down by 32.56 dB. But we needed 28 dB. So at least what we have is achieved. So 28 was minimum, but we have now 32.56. That's also achieved. The final one is the cutoff frequency, which was not a specification, but we have also labeled that here. And that is 472.05 kilohertz, but how do we calculate that? Now you can calculate that for the high pass filter configuration using this formula. So you see the FP again, that is this 500 kilohertz, the cosine, uh, this cosine hyperbolicus, an R cosine hyperbolicus, or that's actually the inverse of that one, and also the epsilon P in order. So you have a lot of parameters here. I won't drive this formula, so I'm not going to prove it, but we will use it. And we will use that the N is 5 and also the epsilon P, which was 0.3493. Let's substitute that and also this 500 kilohertz from our specifications and when you do that you get now 472.03 
kilohertz so very close to what we actually see in the simulation this is just a small rounding of error so we can say every specification uh, the specification given here are met and also we have proven the cutoff frequency is correct guys this is our example number two considering the chebyshev response lc ladder circuit for our high pass filter using this 50 ohm double terminated shunt input circuit. If you have any questions, comments about this example, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in another video. Take care.